This is part of the application development series of our channel. Hi, I'm Tim with Open Data Technology Services. Today I'm going to continue where we left off in the initial video of the application development series. I will show you how to apply the techniques presented in the last video to a different data set in a different region of the world. In this example, we're going to sort of go international to further support that the techniques and methods we are applying to the data sets can be used anywhere regardless of location. It is our intent to show the audience of these videos that the methods the data is being presented by open data providers are similar and can be applied to programming concepts using the same tools and libraries available combined with the mix of our own custom programming and processes. As presented in our last video, we intend to travel the world in this exercise with our next stop being Toronto, Canada and then hopping the Atlantic to Paris, France, and finally finishing up in Melbourne, Australia. All I ask is that you sit back and enjoy this quick presentation utilizing the Open Data Catalog of Toronto, Canada. We begin by locating the Open Data Catalog for the City of Toronto, Canada. Most of the time, if you do a search in Google for the city combined with the keywords Open Data, the Open Data site will be the very first result in the Google search engine. Click on the link referring to Toronto Open Data. We can then begin exploring the Open Data Portal of Toronto, Canada by clicking on the link to the portal. The Open Data Portal for the City of Toronto is where you can search the catalog for the data sets provided by the city. In this example, we will be working with a different data set to show that our methods can be applied to any data set regardless of location and category as long as the geo coordinate information is provided. In this exercise, we are interested in mapping out the fire incidents reported by the City of Toronto. In the portal search bar, we will search for the keywords fire incidents and click on the search button. In the results of the search, the data set we will utilize is the one containing JSON that will have the detail records available by the CCAN API web services. We can now explore the fire incident data to ensure that it contains the geographic data to be able to plot out on our map. This data set provides the proper X and Y geo coordinates of fire incidents without needing any necessary conversion applied to be plotted out. Our next step is to identify the URL endpoint of the catalog to add to our application when processing the data. We will share this endpoint and the query filters used in the description in this video. You will also notice that Toronto chose to use the CCAN API technology as the RESTful web service method to share their data. After examining the JSON, we convert it into a plain old class object so we can include it in our mapping application for processing and manipulation. Our simple web application uses a model view controller framework as the back end for API calls to the open data provider. This MVC back end is combined with an Angular JavaScript front end using the Google Maps JavaScript API for map plotting. Now that we have a class object coded to represent the fire incident record, we now develop the code that makes the RESTful web service call over HTTP and then processes the JSON formatted data into our application to prep it for the next stage of the data's journey. Once our back end is coded, we like to debug and look at the return data to verify our results are as expected. It is a common occurrence that the data may need to be programmatically manipulated at this portion of application development. The next step is to tie all the data into our front end and prepare it to display on a map. In this example, we will only display a few data fields of interest in our map marker pop-up window. We don't want to overwhelm the viewer with all the data fields available. Of course the fields we choose to display is customizable to include or exclude any data field if need be. Also, we've decided to utilize marker images relevant to the data we are displaying. Since our data is dealing with fire incidents, we will be using fire icons for our plot point markers. After the back end and front end code is developed, we can now test the results of our application to ensure that it is doing what is expected when we execute the application. In debug mode execution, a browser will open and display the map plotting the code we just developed. As you can see, the plot points have been positioned on our map with the center location adjusted to show the city of Toronto. We can now click on the markers to examine the data displayed in the pop-up window upon a click action. In this example, our pop-up window displays the following data fields. Incident number, incident type, intersection, alarm time, and possible cause. This data is really valuable because it's a snapshot of history 
and it's what has been reported by the citizens and government as a fire incident. As a possible later exercise that can be part of our Applied Analytics and Data Science series, we can conduct a deeper dive of the data using our techniques to identify possible public safety issues and efforts to incorporate protective measures. For example, if the data is showing a huge cluster of fires of the same cause in a certain area, we can consider a deeper look at this information to recommend safety inspections in that area in the interest of improving public safety. This is just an example, of course, but it shows how this work is valuable and can lead to evidence-based decision-making for a greater good of our citizens. I will leave data analytics as another discussion. This exercise is more focused on data processing and visualization. Thanks for watching the full video and stay tuned as we cross the Atlantic Ocean for our next stop in Paris, France to explore their open data catalog. I hope you have a wonderful day and please subscribe so you can be informed on when our next videos are published.